afternoon. Thanks for coming. Today I'm proud to announce the result of a long-term underco undercover narcotics investigation, Nightfall. Operation Nightfall was birthed by a citizen's anonymous complaint from February 2023 regarding illegal drug activity in the Kenno. This operation spanned 18 months and called the arrest of 13 individuals on charges related to drug trafficking, digital possession, resisting police, and illegal firearms possession. The criminals arrested during this investigation of this operation are the following. Junior, Anthony Norman, Cordell Burr, Doral Daniels, Hakeem Boyette, Wilson, Gennardo Mardrick Alexander, Zevion Collins, Michael Jones, Randolph Ashley II, Rayshawn McLaurin, and Raul Carwell Jr. Between April and October 2024, JSO narcotics detectives, assisted by JSO SWAT operators and patrol officers and FBI agents, served several search warrants in the Ken Knight area. The results of these seizures are staggering and include 79 grams of fentanyl, 489 grams of powder cocaine, 68 grams of crack cocaine, 300 grams of methamphetamine, 1,849 grams of MDMA, 352 grams of ecstasy, 32 pounds of marijuana, 5 pounds of marijuana wax, 7 pounds of psychedelic mushrooms, 68 grams of oxycodone, approximately $15,000 in cash, $35,000 worth of jewelry, two vehicles that were being used for the dis distribution of narcotics, and 16 firearms. 11 of the 16 seized firearms were suitable for forensic an analysis by JSO firearms experts. One of the seized handgun handguns was fitted with an illegal gun switch, which rendered it fully automatic or a fully automatic machine gun. Two of the tested guns were confirmed as crime guns from past incidents. One confirmed crime gun is a 9mm handgun that was used in an August 2022 shooting. No one was injured during the shooting, but multiple vehicles were shot during that, during that incident. The other confirmed crime gun is a 40 caliber Glock model handgun that was used in an August 2019 shooting on Ken Knight Drive in which a person was non-fatally shot. Crime guns and violence are woven into the fabric of the illegal narcotics trade, whether they are, whether they are drugs or, or they are crime guns. And crime guns are repeatedly used by violent criminals and traded on the street. This agency will continue to locate and dismantle drug operations in Jacksonville. We do this not only to remove the poison that fuels overdose deaths and addiction, but also to remove the accelerant which ignites violence in our community. I want to commend the detectives, the patrol officers, and forensic examiners, examiners involved in this operation. Because of Operation Nightfall, 16 guns and large quantities of illegal narcotics have been removed from the Ken Knight neighborhood. Those are 16 guns that cannot be used to kill or injure Jacksonville citizens in the future. Likewise, those are pounds of drugs that cannot cause addictions, overdoses, and deaths in our community. We will never be able to quantify the lives that were saved by getting these guns and narcotics off of our streets. But if just one precious life is saved, the dedicated, patient work of JSO investigators was worthwhile. While I'm very heartened by the results of this operation, I am even more proud of its genesis. Operation Nightfall evidences that when a concerned citizen shares information about neighborhood crime with law enforcement, even anonymously, police can and will take decisive steps to stamp out illegal activity that destroys the quality of life for law-abiding citizens. So in closing, I want to publicly thank that engaged citizen, a Jacksonville citizen who spoke up. The citizen's complaint spearheaded the outcomes that I am sharing today. Communication between the public and the police is at the heart of community policing. We simply cannot do the important work that we do in law, for, law enforcement without the involvement of the public that we serve. So at this time, I'll be happy to answer any questions that I can. Hey, Janice. Sheriff Waters, uh, good afternoon. Specifically with the guns, are there any other investigations where these guns potentially tied to any other crimes in the county? As, we, as it stands right now, no. There were several search, Jake, there were several search warrants served, so some of this stuff came from different locations, but all during the same operation. Go ahead, Eric. So just to clarify, all the different homes, all the different guns, all the different drugs, these are all tied in. All these people were working together. 
That's what it sounds like. That's what it sounds like. Yes, sir. Um, it's hard to tell, uh, but it it does represent a significant amount. And as long if we can continue to knock these off, which we are, there's going to be more coming. If we can continue to do this, we're going to make a significant dent in this problem in our communities. Yes, sir. Can I drive six in one of the four zip codes in all of Florida? And I know when I have spoken, you know, to some of the older population over there that are concerned about the gun violence and the fear and the drugs that are associated with the gun violence, the one question that keeps popping up is that being such a poor or underserved uh, community, how are these people getting this this fire? Like, how, how are they able to afford this kind of firepower? This these kind of guns? It's largely from illegal drug proceeds. I mean, when you're selling drugs, you use the drug money to buy guns, to buy vehicles and things to make to help expand your business. So I would say that that's pretty easy to figure out. That's the way they do it. Um, <clears throat> I guess what I'm asking is, is there someone supplying them? Is there a supplier of guns in, in that community? I mean, because surely, I, mean, I don't know if all of those were stolen. I don't know if you, you said if all were stolen or if they were legally purchased. But, you know, when I see that amount of firepower, I don't think anybody's supplying them. I think they're going out looking for them, buying them themselves. I mean, I don't think there's this mass supplier of firearms that are out there. That wherever they can get a hold of a gun, they're going to get it, whether it's stolen from a vehicle that's left unlocked um, or whether, uh, whether it's bought off the street. I mean, they're getting them from somewhere. Uh, I, but I don't know that there's a supplier of firearms like you would see in, in a movie someplace, Eric, to be honest with you. It's just they get the opportunity, they look for it, and they go find them. And sometimes they even buy them legally because not everyone is a convicted felon. So we never stopped looking, right? Um, but this is one major operation that we were working. Um, but we're never going to stop looking. And if there's something that spins off from this, naturally we're going to go for it. Um, because, like I said, we're going to continue to work this problem. This problem is a direct, it's a, it's a root cause of some of the violence in our city. So we're going to continue to focus heavily on that. Go ahead, Eric. <laughs>